Episode 3, the film begins with a flashback to the torture and death of poor Calvin France by Hilo Drop, breaking France's legs with a crowbar when he won't talk. France answers the bloodied, shattered man, I'm just thinking what the big guy is going to do to you, when he asks why he's smiling. Hero worship all the way through. Now we find the huge guy at a sporting goods store, cheerfully explaining to the owner how the gun rules in New York have reacher-sized loopholes that let him leave with a Beretta 92, a Glock 17, and two Glock 19s re are by leaving a large wad of $50 on the counter. The four are stopped by an NYPD squad car right away after obtaining firearms. Reacher informs his friends he'll be sleeping until he is arrested after sensing what's about to happen from the fact the guy who wakes him up by banging on the passenger side door is the same detective Reacher who airbagged and cold cocked him in the previous episode. Three gags O'Donnell poses as Reacher's lawyer while making light of Rutgers University Law School. Russo is so insulted by Reacher's insinuation that he is so bent that, when provoked, he takes off his handcuffs. By doing so, he becomes the most visually unremarkable person to demonstrate that his survival instinct is seriously malfunctioning. Reacher and O'Donnell decide to trust the police officer with a list of names they obtained from France's flash drive after Russo gains some credibility with them by providing a clue the special investigators overlooked. Russo looks up the names and discovers that one is scheduled to depart from Denver that very day. A.M., the stylish customer who we've previously seen carelessly tossing perfectly good comic books into airport trash cans. As soon as he arrives at the airport, he recognizes the additional security guards posing as passengers. He validates his hunch by feigning to run into one of them and tip over his bag. The guy is a cop because it's vacant. Amazing detail. In the meantime, Dixon and Neagley follow up on the parking pass they discovered in the vehicle of one of the thugs who attempted to assassinate Dixon and Reacher in our previous thrilling episode by visiting a company named New Age Enterprises. Reacher surmises that the address they obtain belongs to the individual who received the parking pass, which is a further trap. This brings us to the main set piece of the show. A Reacher really pulls off a classic wick move, taking two shots to the attacker's body and one to their face. Moving upstairs, Dixon discovers that at least one of these guys is donning body armor that appears to grant him magical abilities. This is demonstrated by the fact that, following multiple close-range hits to the chest, the man is able to immediately get up and engage in some kung fu fighting after pretending to be a possum for a little while. Dixon said he couldn't hit a donkey's ass with a banjo, but O'Donnell proves him wrong by killing her assailant with a headshot. 